you're welcome to this particular video where i'll be talking about responsive design inside of figma right i'll be covering how you can make an entire layout that you of your design totally responsive right now if you're just joining us for the first time in this particular channel don't forget to hit on the subscription button below subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell so that youtube will be able to notify you whenever we share and upload amazing content like this and also don't forget to as well as go into the the comment section and leave a comment saying responsive design right and also like the video they will this will enable us for youtube to refer this video to more people that are looking for responsive design inside of figma that being said let's get started with this particular video now the first thing i want to explain to you guys when it comes to responsive design in figma is understanding the concept of what break point right so what are break points instead of figma now instead of Figma totally right in, in, in a total sense. Now, big points are the areas in which your design actually change view in order to what accommodate the screen size, right? Now, totally you'll be working with um about three types of big points. The first one would be your 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 desktop, a big point which I love to call desktop. So I'm going to type in 1004 one one four four zero here to be my first big point but at this particular point i'm going to name this word desktop right so let's name this particular frame desktop right so i'm going to create another break point again i'm going to create another break point and this particular break point is going to serve for as what well, tablet so if we go under tablet here we can select several break points that we want it to serve for tablet like this particular one right so this particular break point now can serve for tablet let me reduce the height a bit right or i could just make it seven six eight pixels for tablet right so i'm going to call this one tablet tablets so i'm using seven six eight there they will need another break point that's going to serve for a mobile phone right so um most mobile phones are actually like you could see there's so many mobile phone here are actually from what i um um 375 but in this case let me use iphone pro max which is about 728 right so this will serve for us our mobile phone right so at this particular point in time let's call this mobile at this particular point in time we have about how many break point now we have about three break points right as i said earlier on break point is where your design the element inside of your design side of your screen would actually change or adjust in order for it to suit the screen size now the first thing i want to do i want to quickly just design a little wireframe like a little fidelity wireframe i'm going to give this a background color of f5 f5 that's a little bit of gray here right so let's start our design now the next thing i want to do whenever i'm designing i always love to add um layout grid so i'm going to add a layout grid here i'm going to make it column of course and i'm going to make the count 12 right i love working with 12 and i'll make the margin like 85 right now once i have this i'm going to draw a simple rectangular a simple rectangle here and this rectangle is going to serve as what as our navigation let me give it a height of about 70 px there about and i'm going to give it a color of full white and i could just call the name over here i would just call it what nav bar now whenever you want to design responsive design again apart from you understanding big points next you want to understand is full understanding of what auto layout and what constraints but in this particular video i'll not be using auto layout i'll be using more of constraints to ensure to ensure that as i'm even resizing my frame it is resizing according to the width right so i'm going to click here now by the time i drag this a bit you could see that the number is not actually resizing or scaling alongside that particular screen size once it is overstretched it's not scaling around along that particular screen size now for me to solve this i'm going to click here and i'm going to make this number constraint to be left and right the moment i use left and right now and i go back to hit on my desktop screen i will be able to make my number words resize evenly according to that particular screen size so i'm going to say ctrl z to go back so i'm going to draw another sidebar here to eat up about three columns and i'm going to stretch it to this particular size of jerabar right let's increase the height of this thing okay the height is okay 7 to 720 is okay um i'm going to make this white as well right and um, um i'm going to leave it at this particular point three and i'm going to make sure that it's like about 50 there about let's see 23 1 2 3 1 2 3 all right this is about 50 the spacing is about 50 there um, i'm going to make it like that so now if 
you if we could see it's taking about three columns but by the time this is resized right by the time it is resized you could see that it is not adjusting and resizing or scaling according to that particular screen size right but the next thing i want to do is to also add it a constraint of what's left and right so a constraint of left and right is going to solve that particular problem for me and by the time i stretch it now you could see that it is actually adjusting based on that particular screen size now once i've done that the next thing i'm going to do is to draw another box here that is going to act I see let me let's give it the height of let's say 150 this other box now is going to act as if it's another element right so this is like just a server card element but in this case i just want to make sure that they are just like i'm uh, um, low fidelity wireframe right so we're not going to create like an entire design from scratch now once i have this again as well and um as you can see if i click here and i try to resize it you could see that that is also not resizing and scaling up as usual so control z to go back to my default shape i'm going to add the same effect again left and right so i have the same constraints for all of them left and right to ensure that they are all resizing the same way so let's take away this and let's test this now you could see they are all resizing the same way right so whenever you want to create responsive design the first thing you want to ensure uh, you do is that all your design are actually scalable and responsive or can adapt with your screen with when it is being adjusted right so you could see that with these three elements this serving as a nav bar this serving as a sidebar and this also serving as probably a card element inside this particular design right so let's go ahead to duplicate this over and over again so i'm going to click this holding on my alternate key i'm going to duplicate it like this duplicate it again like this and I'm going to select the three of them like this and I'm going to hold down my alternate key sorry I'm going to hold down my alternate key and also try to duplicate them one two and also try to duplicate it one more time and this time around I can say one two right so let's assume that this one stops exactly here all right so let's see what we have now if I go back and I remove this, this is exactly what we have. And by the time I resize it, you could see that everything is basically adjusting, right? So just by the fact that everything is adjusting, right, because of my constraint does not necessarily mean that this particular design is actually responsive, right? So let's see how we can make this particular design responsive. So I'm going to go back, right? Now, as you can see, we have designed one of the first breakpoints, which would be desktop, right? As I explained earlier on, breakpoints are the areas where the UI, the element inside of your UI, will change to adjust to the screen size, right? So the next thing I want to do, let's design the, the breakpoint. Let's design how it will change when it is on tablet, right? Making tablet the second breakpoint. So let's change the background color to F5, F5, F5 as usual. And um, this time around, I'm going to give it auto layout again as well. But this time around, I want it to be three. So I'm going to give it auto layer, grid, and column, of course. But this time around, I'm not going to give it 85. I'm going to give it something like 50. So once I have 50 over there, that looks cool to me. And the count is going to be three, right? So guess what I'm going to do? I'm just going to copy this, Control C, come in here, and Control V it. And of course, it's going to be like far away stretch. I'm going to stretch it back. And now let's try and see because it is still left and right. So I bet this is still going to be what responsive in a way. So let's try it. So you could see it is still responsive. It's adjusting anyhow I do that, right? It's a little bit adapting to it. So let's click this other one. Let's come here and paste it as well. And I'm going to bring it to this point. And I'm going to adjust it and show that it's about like 30 up or 50. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. Okay, this is about 50 up. Let's make it 30. 1, 2. All right. So this is what we're talking about, 30. Okay. Let's adjust it now to just take three columns. So I'm going to duplicate this now like this. Duplicate this like this again as well. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is to select the whole three of them. And also duplicate it by holding down my alternate key right and uh, i'll select this entire row and try to duplicate it again as well right so um let's delete this other one this last one all right so let's test this now on tablet so this is what we have and you see it is adjusting way fine right so now on our mobile let's do something similar to again on our mobile as well i'm going to say f5 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 right but the mobile now i'm going to click this Bring it down here, Control V as well. Adjust it to the side again as well. And test it to ensure that mobile is working perfectly fine. Of course, it's working perfectly fine. 
and um, the next one I'm going to do, I'm going to click this, copy it. But before I do that, let me also add my layout grid on mobile to be able to adjust it. On my mobile, I want it to be two columns, right? I'm going to add columns. I'm going to say two here. Then the margin should be 20 there about. That's cool. And I'm going to paste this now. And I'm going to drop this here. And try to watch my space in there. I'm making that ensure that it's about 30 there about. So that's cool. That's 30. I'm going to bring it here as well. I'll duplicate this now. Right, I'll put the both of them together. I'll duplicate it as well. Right, put the both of them together. I'll duplicate it as well. Right, so we have about three shapes here. This other shape is not needed at the moment. Let's take it off and let's try. It. Let me close this and I will see that this stuff is actually still responsive. Right, so now we have done our three big points. In fact, once you get to this level of your design, you are almost done, right? Because with this, now this is like your design. So what I'm trying to say is, whenever you come up with a design that you want to make really responsive, the first thing you want to do is to first of all design the break point, right? How is that design going to look probably on tablet and how that design is going to look on mobile? Now, in some cases, you might have more than three break points, you might have more than two break points, right? You might have as many break points as you can have as long as that particular design is definitely responsive right so that being said next thing i want to do right now the next thing i want to do right now is to introduce two different plugins that we can actually use to achieve our responsive design now if i go over here the first plugin i want to talk about is the responsive plugin so the name of this plugin is called responsive so you want to go to the figma community and search for this particular plugin called responsive by emin sinani right i have just basically installed this particular plugin so you want to go ahead and install it right once your plugin is installed you're ready to start designing your responsive plugin now for you to use that particular plugin to come up with your design the first thing you want to do is basically um um create your your ad board right so let's get an ad board so let's create an empty ad board let's call this desktop and um, this ad board is going to be here and let's call this 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 ad board name responsive right so now for us to make this stuff responsive um fully we're going to go back here go to the plugins and come up with that particular plugin called responsive so this is the plugin over here i've installed it already then you'll find it there so once you see your plugin there for you to make it responsive this plugin needs two things you need the input frames and the responsive frame right so in this case our designs are the input frame why this other frame will be the responsive frame right so i'm going to select this holding my shift key select this and select this and i'm going to click on this plus sign over here so the moment i click on it here automatically it just appears here so i'm going to click on this responsive frame as well and click here as well and it automatically appear here as you can see now our design is automatically what responsive see it is responsive across if i stretch like this it is still responsive if i bring it down it is still responsive right so i can even reduce the height of this plug so it's not look weird aha uh -huh. amazing something like this right so if i stretch it you can see tablets has changed to tablets if i stretch it i think to mobile and this design is what super super responsive right so you could see this is how it's going to look like on mobile and um if i stretch it a little bit way further this is going to look like on tablet it's changing on its own and if i stretch it a little bit way further um this is going to look like what on desktop right you could see that at each break point it is actually changing the frame at each break point right at each break point it's changing the frame at each break point which is making it what super super responsive right now another plugin there are so many plugins out there that you can use to achieve this but i want to talk about two the second plugin i may you might want to try out is the breakpoint plugin right so the breakpoint plugin is another amazing plugin as of course you can see the example here you can also try out the breakpoint plugin to create responsive design so let's try it out so let's try it out so what i'm going to do is i will just duplicate all of this because i don't want to like use them for the breakpoint plugin so let's use this for the breakpoint plugin so if you have the breakpoint plugin and you want to use them for responsive design all you need to do is to go to plugins you click on breakpoint and once breakpoint is on breakpoint has like trial period 15 days trial period or you can actually pay about 18 dollars for the freelance um, um, um aspect of the plugin right and have your license key or stuff and so on and so forth and activate it but for now i'm using the free version as i'm just trying to show you guys how you can use this plugin so i'm going to click on continue of course 
The moment I click on continue, the next thing I want to do now is going to ask me to add a new um, existing, add a new adaptive layout. So I'm going to click on add a new adaptive layout. Automatically, it's going to create this particular frame. So this is where my responsive design is going to live. Since I have three breakpoints here, I'm going to ensure that I have three stops here. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to click on um, this. I'm going to click on it again. And, um, and of course, um, what I want to do now is I want to ensure that this and um, this is this. This is this, of course. So, for example, now, um, let's select um, our 20. So, I'm going to click this. So, if I'm here, right, I want it to be, to give me that. So, I'm going to select this. I'm going to select, click on plus sign, and I'm going to select this, right? As you can see, it's there. So, the moment I'm here, it's giving me the moment I'm here. I want it to give me um, the mobile version whenever I'm there, right? So, I'm going to select this. So this, let's select this. So I'm going to do this. Oops, what did I do? I select the back. I'm going to click this. I'm going to ask me to, I'm going to select this particular frame. So the moment I'm here, it's going to give me that. The moment I'm here, it's going to give me something else. I'm going to click on this particular frame again. I'm going to select this, right? So the moment I'm here as well, it's going to give me that as well. So you could see I've fixed all my plugins and um, that's the way you use the break, your breakpoint plugin. So the moment you come down here again, since you're giving different responsive view, you can actually adjust it and you can see the way these things are actually adjusting based on the breakpoint, right? You can see the several breakpoints that I used there, right? So you can use any of this plugin and you can create responsive view of your design, right? So that is it about creating responsive design inside of Figma. Um, after you making use of materials and constraints to ensure that your designs are actually adaptive and so on and so forth, then you use either of this plugin, um, responsive or breakpoint, to ensure that your design is actually responsive, right? Now, if you're watching this particular video and you want to take a course um, in UI UX design and you want to and you want to be a UI designer, right? I have an amazing online course that I just created that if you get the course, I will be able to mentor you. I will be leaving the link uh, um, to join it inside the WhatsApp group, right? So this is an amazing course over here and it has a project brief um, UI design. I come up with, I came up with a project brief on simple e-commerce application and we did the, the entire UX of it. We did the empathy map, we did the user personas, we did the competitive analysis. We did the user stories, we did the user journey map, we did the site map, we did the user, user flow and uh, uh, wire flow as well. And I went on to create the entire um, wireframe, the design up to case study level, right? In this particular course. And not just that as well. If you take this particular course, you'll be getting some things from me for free. Like one of the things that you'll be getting from me for free would definitely be me mentoring you one on one for free to ensure that you have like two case study in your portfolio to start your career as a UI designer. Not just that as well, you're also going to join a support WhatsApp group where in that particular group we are having once in every two weeks live session, question and answer session and clarity session. And apart from that, because people do reach out to me and people do reach out to Nelly. I um, to refer interns and to refer talents to them as well. I'll be sending um, 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 talents your way. I'll be sending uh, opportunities, job opportunities, and internship opportunities your way for you to kickstart your career, right? You might actually want to do that as well. And apart from that, if you're watching this particular video, um, it depending on when you're watching this particular video, I currently have um, every Wednesdays by 8 p.m. That you can also join as well. So you want to read out the um, the comment section, the description of this particular video on YouTube, so that you're going to see where I'll be working on, the, on an Uber-like logistic platform. That you can actually join me for free. You don't need to pay anything. Just join, and every Wednesdays, and um, and and we talk about this Uber-like logistic platform, and I design it live for you and live, and you can see how I work on real life case uh, and projects from start to finish. And of course, I thank you for watching this particular video. Don't forget to um, um, uh, um, like this particular video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and drop a comment. Don't leave this video without dropping a comment. Say something nice about this particular video you've just seen, and as well as leave a positive review inside of the comment section. And I hope to see you in my subsequent videos.